Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is a card reading for the year of the water tiger, which is starting today. For me, this is February 1st, running for an entire year. And I'm dividing the reading up into three, three readings, right? Just like a pick a card reading, but this is a little bit different. So the first reading is these two pieces of green malachite. The second reading is clear quartz and blue sodalite. And the third reading is this piece of, this is amethyst blended with citrine. I think people call it amertrine or something like that. And this other mystery stone, I don't actually know what it's called. If anybody can tell me what this is, I would really appreciate it if you could let me know in the comments because I lost the name and I don't know. So if you feel one of these groups of stones and crystals calling out to you, by all means, um, follow your intuition and go with that one. But I have also been getting, I, I kind of already have the message for each of these three readings and they are divided up into how you're feeling right now or how you've been feeling lately. So um, I'll move my hands. So if you want to pick the, pick the reading intuitively, you can go ahead and you can pause and you know, just look at the crystals. Or uh, now I'm going to go ahead and tell you <laughs> basically what frequency bandwidth each of these three readings is for. So the first reading with the green malachite is for people who are not feeling their best right now, right? This is for people who <sighs> you've been in the struggle. You might be feeling dark night of the soul. You might be just depressed, anxious, worried. You might be feeling like nothing is working out for you, right? This is people who are in stuck, um, maybe not stuck, maybe you're not there all the time, but if you're feeling like that's the majority of your experience as of late, that reading is for you, okay? And that reading is going to be about how this year is going to be bringing in deep, 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 deep heart healing for you. The second reading with the clear quartz and the... This little piece of blue soda light. I love this little guy. He has done great work for me. His name is Sir Reginald, Sir Reginald the <laughs> Third, believe it or not, and he helped me through an enormous, uh, like emotional breakthrough one day. So I have a lot of love for this guy. And <laughs> this second reading is for people who are kind of in the middle, right? The middle zone, the middle frequencies. Maybe you're feeling a little bored. Maybe you're feeling a little stagnant. Maybe you're at a crossroads. Maybe you feel like you're at a plateau where you just kind of don't know what's next. It's that middle energy, right? The middle energy. The third reading with our mystery stone and our amethyst and citrine. This is for people who <laughs> have been flying high above it all. Maybe you're looking around at the world and going, I've been feeling so good, but everybody around me is, is, is struggling, right? And it maybe it's been a little bit hard allowing yourself to fly high um, while everyone else is kind of down down in the dumps a little bit, right? But this is where you're at right now. You look back at your life and you know, you really understand how far you've come and you feel good patting yourself in the back going, yes, I've done it. Look what I have accomplished for myself. And it doesn't even have to be like physical material accomplishments. This is like, look how far you've come with your frequency, with your emotions, with your mental health, feeling so good, feeling so proud of yourself and knowing that this is just the beginning. You've passed the first massive hurdle and milestone in your life of raising your frequency high enough that now you have you you understand this game of raising your frequency to frequency to an extent and you're just excited and looking forward to how much bigger better you know faster stronger more awesome more exuberant more joyous your life can become so really people who are vibing really high especially compared to how you were in the past so with that i will see you guys in your reading Okay, this is group number one with your pair of green malachite crystals. I love these so much. I carry them around with me whenever <laughs> I feel like I want to get rooted into my heart, rooted into my heart. It is so deeply heart healing. And um, what I will say about the heart healing, at least my experience of heart healing with green malachite, is it's a little bit different than other heart healing stones or crystals you might be familiar with, such as like strawberry quartz. I feel like st something like strawberry quartz brings in more like self-love and this green malachite for me anyway 
really brings up this theme of like deep deep levels of forgiveness it's it, that's like the bottom of it right opening up your <laughs> your heart to um see feel receive forgiveness and the first card that popped up was the ace of discs which would be the ace of pentacles with wealth but this is like a new beginning right this is an ace and this is an like a grounded ace this is earth energy ace so i feel like I'm just actually going to stick that card at the top. That's kind of the general energy for your entire year, this year of the water tiger, to kind of allow you to get to this new start, to allow you to begin this new life experience. The Ace of Pentacles for me can even represent like the new earth. And But if you don't want to take it that far, if you just want it to be like your the new version of your life, right? The new experience of your life, then it's that. That's what you want to get. That's what you want to go. And that's what's in store for you this year as long as you allow yourself to just walk your path and to unfold and to, to feel and to heal. Um, actually, I want to get some Oracle cards first. Yeah, I can really feel it uh, for you guys in like the center of my chest, in my heart. It's it's heavy, you know? It's heavy what you've been going through. And there's like a sense of exhaustion because a lot of what you've been going through is, you know, many lifetimes of this, many lifetimes of this. And that's why it's so hard to experience forgiveness. And this is ex forgiveness for self and others right for some of you it might be more experiencing self-forgiveness forgiveness of the self others of you this is going to be experiencing forgiveness for the people out there that you think you can't forgive the people out there who you feel have done the unforgivable and note though how that goes hand in hand when you allow yourself to forgive others that opens you up to a greater degree of self-forgiveness. When you forgive yourself and you go, oh, it's also easier for me to forgive others. So when you do that, when you experience both types of forgiveness, and you probably throughout the year have pockets of energy where you're working on self, self-forgiveness, right? And then pockets of energy when you're working on um, releasing the pain that others cause right releasing the pain releasing the emotional pain it's like you guys look out at the world or you look at people around you and you just see other people causing pain causing harm to innocence right or to you or to people who, who are innocent or to animals or to the earth itself right and you feel that pain and it's like you just want them to stop <laughs> you just want them to stop you just want it to stop so that you can stop hurting Okay, you just want it, you just want them to stop doing whatever they're doing so that you can stop hurting. And that, that right there, okay, that's what this is all about. <laughs> you feel like there is this necessary causal connection between the harmful actions of others and how you feel. And the trick here, guys, is you gotta disconnect that. That needs to be like cleared right out. You are not required to feel bad because other people are doing anything it doesn't matter what they're doing it doesn't matter what they're doing it does not require you to have any emotional response to that whatsoever you do not need to feel bad simply because other people are in pain right and and i i know <laughs> i can feel that that's like triggering that's like triggering to people right because how can you how can you allow yourself to be happy if other people are suffering how can you and you feel like maybe you would be ignoring their pain. You'd be ignoring their pain if you weren't in pain with them, right? Um, but it's like... It's like overactive empathy, overactive compassion, where you feel like you need to suffer because other people are suffering. And there's a little piece of the puzzle that you're going to graduate into, right? You graduate out of this... This, like circle of suffering right you graduate out of this and the the end result is when you realize okay you can feel good you can be healed you can be whole you can have a good day you can feel joy you can feel peace you can feel love in yourself and you can still from that place that piece of whole that place of wholeness and joy and light you from that place can still empathize with 
others, can still empathically feel the pain of others. You can still send compassion and love to others. You can still help others. You can still do that while feeling better yourself. There doesn't need to be this connection. That connection needs to be severed. And I keep being drawn over here to grab my bowls. Guys, and I actually very, very, very rarely use bowl, my singing bowls in a reading, but um, I really am guided to do this. So if anybody wants to set an intention and just do, this will be quick, maybe like one or two minutes. That's all it takes, right? Because you can, you can heal yourself energetically whenever you want. You don't need to even know how to do any energy work or anything. It's just an intention and it's just allowing it to happen. So if anybody would like to do a little bit of energy work with me, um, we're just going to set the intention to sever this cord that binds, right? There's this cord, there's this energetic connection connecting you to other people's pain, to connecting you to other people's suffering, connecting you to the actions of others. And it's like, it's like other people's actions, other people's emotions, other people's feelings are... <laughs> They're controlling your feelings. Other people's feelings are controlling your feelings and we want to sever that connection. We want to like dissolve it. Some of you in your minds, you know, you might do a cord cutting, right? Um, you might imagine like a candle burning through a string. You might imagine it's just dissolving. You might also just imagine it flooding, flooding with light, flooding with light, flooding with light. You know, it doesn't matter. The visual doesn't matter. How you look at this doesn't matter. It's just the energy and the intention of it. If you'd like to call in, any of your higher guidance, any beings, anybody you want, go ahead. <sighs> but I think we can make this fairly, fairly simple. Just, <sighs> I release the cords that bind. I release the cords that bind. I release the cords that bind me to the actions and emotions of others and reclaim my emotional sovereignty now. Breathe it out if you want great big deep breaths. <sighs> Flick your arms, jump up and down. Move your body. Any Anything, anything. Cry, cry if you want to. Get it out, get it out, get it out. It is gone, it is gone. I could feel that rushing out of my heart. I could feel this massive rush um, of like, gunk right just, just it doesn't matter what it was it was blocks it was like almost like congealed suffering was like clogging up your heart chakra and it's it flowed it flowed it flowed it flowed it's flowing it's gone it's gone it's gone imagine like liquid light or or cool clear water rushing and bathing your heart right <sighs> bathing your heart and if you like you can also set the intention to allow this work to continue and to run and to clear through your heart to clear your heart to clear your heart um 24 7 24 7 for as long as it takes for all of this residue to clear and clear out of your heart um you, you, we can also ask for it to be integrated as much as possible in your sleep state in your sleep state deep in your sleep state May your guides and higher guidance and source, the light of source itself, come through to clear and purify, remove everything in your heart chakra that is not of your highest good, to clear and remove all of it, and to allow this work to be gentle and to continue to run in the background and integrate in your own perfect timing, in your own perfect timing. Oh, <sighs> okay. That took me by complete surprise. I um, I almost don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me grab a drink of water. <laughs> I was just um, I drink a lot of lemon water and lime water all the time. 
all the time, all the time drinking lemon and lime water. Um, so some of you might like to drink lime water. I, I would, uh, I recommend lime <laughs> for the heart. Why lime and not lemon, right? Because lime is green, right? The heart chakra is green. And whenever I'm going through a heart chakra period, I drink, I, I'm like obsessed with lime. Sometimes I've actually even found myself like chewing on a lime. I've literally, when I was in a really, when I'm in really difficult heart healing periods, I chew on limes. <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and it helps. It's like, so helps it, it, it like helps your heart like vibrate with the frequency of the lime and lemons would be, you know, more corresponding to the solar plexus. So just depending on what's going on with you. Okay. Okay. Whew. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was trying, I was starting to say sorry, but then I realized I don't, I don't need to say sorry. But what I can say is just thank you. Thank you for, um, doing the, that work with me and thank you for doing it for yourself. Thank you for doing it for the universe and thank you for your patience while I get my bearings here and remember what I'm doing. Cause I was doing a card reading. I didn't sit down to do energy work, but of course, energy, card readings are always energy work, right? They're just, everything is energy work. Everything is energy work. Everything is just energy work in disguise. Every single card reading I do is an energy transmission. And it's the same thing with any video you watch on YouTube. It is all energy transmissions. <sighs> Look at this. Your soul star chakra coming online with peace. This beautiful lotus flower opening. <sighs> opening, opening, opening. And you're allowing peace to flow through your body now peace to flow through your body. <sighs> if you like, when you feel triggered, when you feel, when you feel less than peaceful, let me put it that way, when you're feeling anything other than peaceful and you want to move into a place of peace, Just say out loud, I choose peace. I choose peace. Every morning, I choose peace. Saying it out loud, like saying it verbally like that, um, helps you. It, it's like this chain of connection, right? Um, if you could just, it would, it would be great if you could just manipulate your emotions and just choose an emotion and be it. And don't get me wrong, you absolutely can do that. Every single human has the capacity to do that. But it, it's hard when you're, practicing doing that right so that's why it helps to first use language use language say something like i choose peace that creates a frequency right that selects the idea and then your the language the verbal speech starts to influence your thoughts and then in your mind now you're thinking i choose peace and then you go out about your day and you're saying peace 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 right i choose peace Yes, and now you're getting closer, right? And then your thoughts eventually percolate down into your emotions. Your thoughts influence your emotions. Of course, your emotions also influence your thoughts, but you can kind of choose which way the direction is flowing. So if your emotions are not where you want them to be, but you feel like you might be able to start with some words or with your thoughts, then that helps helps you. It is just one tool in the toolbox to help you put your emotions where you want them to be. So if you want to feel more peace, I choose peace. I choose peace. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Mother Neptune. This is so powerful. Um, it says sacrifice here. I think that's where you guys have been. Look at this green, right? This green heart chakra. The, the main like message with this card is... It's about tuning into your higher emotional body, okay? And this is like really, this is really deep. I did not expect this reading. I'm not even gonna draw any more cards, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you're only gonna get these three cards because this is, this was just energy work. This is an energy transmission is what this is. I, I don't even wanna draw any more cards. I'm gonna put them aside. So how do I explain this? So there's this, idea. It's an idea that really resonates with me and one that I have used, like very specifically used to come into higher levels of emotional stability, peace, and fulfillment. And it's the idea that Neptune is a, the higher, is a higher octave of the moon. So if you think of the moon, um, obviously closely connected with your, mo your emotions and 
if you're one of those people like <laughs> who feels the phases of the moon, like new moon to full moon and back again, if you feel your emotional fluctuations around the phases of the moon, then you're really tuned into the fluctuations of the moon. <laughs> and moon, the moon is beautiful. We can say all kinds of wonderful things about the moon and it is so important for the moon to stir the pot, both physically, literally with the tides of the ocean on earth and literally with our emotions. It allows us to have this really rapid mixing of emotions all the time, but it also puts us in this kind of state of constant emotional flux and it can be difficult to find emotional stability when your emotional body is being ruled by the moon like that. Like the way I see it, and I, I say this not because I'm repeating something I've read, but because I've like literally experienced it over several years of kind of feeling into this. It's as the moon moves through the signs and as it goes through its phases and it goes through its whole lunar year, right? It's, <laughs> now I understand why this is coming out because it's the lunar new year. Um, the lunar new, the whole lunar year is putting you through your paces. It pulls you through different emotional experiences and it's like riding really choppy waves. It's like riding rapids because it's always mixing, always churning, always moving. And what can help if you feel like you have trouble getting yourself into a higher frequency, into a higher emotional frequency, into those better, um, those better, just better feeling emotions. <sighs> tune into Neptune, okay? Tune into Neptune. You can ask the planet Neptune <laughs> to... to like hook in. You can hook into Neptune. You can energetically connect yourself to Neptune and Neptune moves so slowly, right? So it's this way more stable way of experiencing your emotions. Instead of being constantly in the churn, constantly in the mix, now you're tuned into this planet. Your emotional body can literally tune into this planet that is slow and steady. And it, it is so much like Neptune is a lot bigger than the moon, right? It, it's a lot more has a lot more gravity, has a lot more stillness, has a lot more depth than the moon. It's just literally a higher octave. And you know, sometimes when we say higher octaves, I think we should really say a deeper octave because it's just more. <laughs> it is more, right? It is more. Neptune is like the moon, but more. It is deeper. It is higher in frequency. It is more stable. It is slower and calmer and like richer, right? Richer. And that's, again, that's energy work you can do for yourself. You can do that for yourself. You can just, when you're falling asleep at night, you can talk to Neptune. Uh, if, you, if you don't, if you don't, if, if you're not used to like feeling the planets or talking to the planets or channeling the planets, that might feel strange, <laughs> might feel silly, but just try it, right? The planets can hear you. Like they have, they're, con they're conscious just like you are and they're tuned into all the energies flying around the solar system. They can hear you and you can ask um, you know, or you can just ask your higher self to set this up for you. You can just ask to have Neptune um, govern your emotional body. And that what that does is syncs you up with the emotional body of your higher self. It's just a higher frequency of your emotional body. So then it's easier to access those higher frequency emotions. It is easier to stay in those higher frequency emotions. And it is easier to experience levels of forgiveness because you'll, you will have your higher self's like deep soul wisdom about why everything is the way it is and how everything is playing out. And, um, Yeah, so you do not need anybody to do that energy work for you. I want to be very clear on that because I am going to I am going to mention that I one of the very first guided meditation energy work things I di I ever did was was about this. I have a I'm not in my Etsy shop. Um you can get the link to my Etsy shop in the box down below. I have um a, I like I have an MP3 posted on there that you can purchase where I do this work of tuning you into Neptune and also Uranus for your mental body. It's this tuning into Uranus for your mental body and Neptune for your emotional body to get you out of like the moon and Mercury, right? It just literally tunes you into a higher frequency state of your mental and emotional bodies. And I, I mean, if you watch my channel, normally you know that I almost never, very, 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 very rarely would I point you to my Etsy shop to like shop for something, right? But I feel so strongly of pointing that out. Um, what I will say is I recorded that a long time ago. I don't really remember what it is. <laughs> I actually, almost, I almost thought about deleting it a little while ago. So, <laughs> but I, I was guided to keep it up and here I am and it's coming out so strongly. So I don't know. Um, just throwing that out there if anybody wants to check that out. <sighs> Okay, I am going to pull one card just to have a final message. So 
So either way, guys, <laughs> no matter <laughs> this next year is going to be transformative for you, right? Transformative. I am a little bit surprised at how these messages came through basically as like energy work and advice. This was not at all my intention for this reading. I mean, my intention was to bring through whatever it was that you were supposed to receive, right? That That's only, that's ever my only intention. Um, but I had sort of assumed I would be doing more of a card reading, but I guess not. So deep, deep year of transformation on the heart level, right? And that is when, that's where it all begins. It all begins clearing out the heart. And those of you who chose to do the work with the singing bowls with me, um, you have started a massive clearing process and go easy on yourself while you let it, while you let it integrate. Um, okay. So these cards just have a channeled message on the back. I'm going to close my eyes while I shuffle. Um, okay. I'm going to, I don't, I did, did I get them all? Okay. <laughs> back in. Your guys' energy as a group feels so much clearer and calmer than in the beginning. Okay. Always accompanied. You got the dragonfly, that symbol of transformation coming up out of these cherry blossoms. Do you know that you are loved by a benevolent source? One who knows you and cares for you without reservation? The divine is showing up for you in various forms, no matter where you find yourself. It may occur in the form of sharing fondness with faithful friends or in any of the various other diversified forms of all life. Such as, you ask? Ah, a keen-sighted dragonfly darting around you or sunshine lighting up a crude pathway through the dense forest or an encouraging word from a stranger at the moment you need it most. Remove the lenses of indifference and disbelief. As you open yourself to seeing more than meets the eye, you will notice the amazing abundance of signs affirming your direction. Step into wonderment and behold yourself embraced by the divine. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave you there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hello, group number two, here with the Clear Quartz and Sir Reginald the <laughs> Third. Okay. To me, this feels your message is about self expression. Okay. This blue soda light is a throat chakra card. And I got to tell you, I once put this little guy on my head. Uh, we were driving around, I took him on a car ride and I just put him on top of my head and literally the next thing I know, it, no, it was crazy. It was actually the experience that really showed me just how powerful like stones and crystals are. I put him on my head and suddenly I was like just gushing like feelings and crying and blubbering and for like, like almost an hour talking about all of these things that used to bother me and just kind of doing this deep, deep, deep dive into like clearing out resentments I was holding about how difficult my life had been, right? Uh, or like, you know, I had felt like my life had been difficult and all I needed to do was put this little, little dude on my head and it just came forth gushing, just rushing out of me and <laughs> expressing it was all I needed to do. And then I felt completely better. And now if I think about all those things that I had bit that had, had been bothering me at the time, none of it bothers me anymore at all. I just needed to express it right. I just needed to express it. You know, the first reading was about, you know, a deep cleaning, like, cleansing and healing to the heart, specifically around forgiveness. Um, I feel like this year for you guys, it, you know, there's going to be some heart healing, sure, but it's going to be less of this intense focus on forgiveness and more of like, 
it's kind of like cleaning up the dust. It's like you guys might find that, okay, it's like, you know, when you look around your house and you go, oh, okay, it's pretty clean. Um, but then you like shake a blanket and all this dust comes out. It's that kind of thing. Um, I, I would actually kind of feel like you guys might have these spikes throughout the year. So you're feeling pretty good. You're doing pretty good. But then like something happens and it's like, uh, something else happens and it's like, oh, more weird stuff coming up. So, but I think it's like going to be isolated to like days, like, like a day here, a day there, a day here, a day there. And every time you might feel like, oh, am I, I guess I'm not as stable as I thought I was. Oh, these weird things coming up. But really just understand that you're just purging and clearing is clearing the dust, clearing the debris. Um, and all of this is to help you understand the importance of self-expression and that self-expression, it, it, the whole, I, the whole year, the whole, your whole year, guys, is a, is a throat chakra year. It's a self-expression year. And it is, there's like two parts to this. One, it is understanding that you need to express yourself because that is so healing, right? Literally expressing yourself gets rid of the past. It gets rid of all those, the garbage you've been holding on to that was based in the past. It helps you drop your baggage. And you don't need, it's like, you don't need to do all this deep, crazy energy work or shadow work or anything. You just literally need to just get it out, right? Talk about it to somebody, write it down, burn it, the paper, whatever. It's like, you just need to express yourself, do some art, anything, just express. Self-expression is in, is in itself healing. It's like, I'm seeing, um, like turning a valve and letting out a bunch of steam. It's like, you're just venting. You need to vent. You need to get this out because it's like stewing inside of you, right? Get, get it out. And then why are you doing all that, right? Why do you need to get all this stuff out? It's because, <laughs> you're working up to this way deeper level of self-expression, like a much higher vibrating throat chakra. Um, the image I'm getting, it's, it's like, cause your throat chakra is typically represented by the color blue, right? So, but it's, I keep seeing like your, your throat chakra is blue. It's like a bright, bright blue light, right? That blue ray of communication. But then it's also flickering with like bright transcendent yellow almost like this yellow is coming from within and it's like connected to your solar plexus as if your throat and your solar plexus can combine or I don't know if they combine maybe they do I don't know <laughs> but it's like they're going to start vi vibrating in harmony when your throat and your solar plexus vibrate in harmony now you have unlocked the rest of your life you have unlocked your next level if you're feeling because you guys are the middle the middle frequency right if you're feeling kind of like eh, just kind of in a rut kind of in a slog <laughs> it's because you're building something right you're building something look at this building blocks building blocks you've been laying foundations laying foundations some of you might have been laying foundations for years and years and years maybe you've been laying foundations it <laughs> doesn't matter how long it's been you've been laying those foundations and it's like you've been independently calibrating your throat and your solar plexus and they're coming into, that's the point of this year is to get them to be like matched, to get them vibrating at the same intensity so that they can harmonize and create this new beautiful note. It's like, you know, when you, two singers, you can, if you have like a singer here and a singer here, right, and they're both singing a note, you can be very aware of that it's two different voices, right? But if you have two very talented singers who are also used to singing with each other, there's like an, a sound effect that can happen where suddenly it feels like it's just one person singing. Even if they're singing different notes, you can kind of feel like they're inside of each other's mouths is what vocalists say. It's singing inside of someone else's mouth. Your solar plexus and your sake, or your solar plexus in your throat are gonna be coming into a new level of accord which is setting up for your next level, your next level, like next level of abundance, next level of romance, next level of just life satisfaction, right? Of artistic expression. And it all begins with venting. <laughs> Poised, you are getting ready to launch. And this, this self-expression also and that's no place like home, which I'll get to in a bit. The self-expression is going to help you feel like this. Going to help you feel this good. That's what you want to feel like when you wake up in the morning. 
I mean, if you're like a man, maybe maybe that feels too fruity, fruity tooty for you. So you can come up with some different type of power pose, right? And in fact, power pose, power pose, pay attention to your posture, guys. Pay attention to your posture. I mean, we're talking a lot about self-expression through like language and the voice, but it's also your body, okay? The year of the water tiger, right? Just think about cats. Think about any cats, your house cat. They walk, their body language is everything. They prowl, they stand. You can you can feel the vibe off of a cat because of their body language. And they are always so, so poised. Get in touch with your body and allow your, your, allow your mind to relax. I was gonna say relax your body, but I don't really think that's it. <laughs> your, your body will naturally fall and you'll have a new way of carrying yourself. You'll have a new way of communicating to other people with your body language, with your facial expressions, but it's not really about controlling your body. You know, you, if you want to have, if you want to communicate with somebody through body language and facial expressions, you don't need to like think about what you're doing and then like manipulate your body. It actually starts in the mind by allowing your mind to relax and losing yourself in the moment. Lose yourself in the moment. Like Eminem gets it, right? Eminem gets it. Lose yourself in the moment, okay? Except the Eminem song goes like you've only got one shot, right? <laughs> but no, you you there's you never miss your chance, right? You never miss your chance. So Eminem half understood this, right? You, you have another chance and another chance and another chance and another chance and another chance. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. So you can practice this as fumbling as you like, right? As fumbling as you were like relaxing into the moment, losing yourself completely in the moment. And it's like channel the moment be the moment, channel the moment. You are the focal point for the energy of the moment. This reminds me of a metaphor that popped into my head today when I was in the car and I randomly just like my hand of its own accord like hit the radio button and the radio started playing. And in that moment, I realized, you know, radio frequencies, all the different radio stations, they're all in the air constantly all the time. That's frequencies flying through the air. But if no one is tuning into that frequency and nobody is tuning on the radio <laughs> and then therefore and like letting the the frequency come out through the speakers then it doesn't matter what's in the air right those are just frequencies in the air they're just possibilities they're just potentials they do exist in frequency form but they're not being grounded right if you stick your radio antenna up and then you turn on the radio and the radio comes out of your speakers now that vibration those sounds the, those subtle radio waves right the subtle radio wave frequencies They've now been turned into sound waves that you can hear, that you can enjoy, and you can hear someone's voice. You can hear guitars and drums and whatever's on there, whatever, whatever the music is, right? You can hear it all. It has been grounded. And now, now you are hearing it, right? You can't, I mean, maybe some people are sensitive enough that they can like hear radio waves on the wind, but I certainly can't, right? I need the help of the antenna and the radio and the speakers in order to interpret the radio wave and to ground it into the human reality, right? To ground it into the human sensory reality is what is what is really doing when you turn on the radio. You've grounded a radio wave into the human sensory reality. And that's what you guys can do when you lose yourself in the moment, when you channel the moment. Understand that like you are a frequency exactly like a radio wave, like, you know, you're you're like a radio station flying around in the air, you know, your own higher self, your own soul, your own deep consciousness. You are tuned into the data stream coming down all the way from the highest levels of your own consciousness, all the way from your source, all the way from your source, right? You're, the frequency of your source is always flying through the air exactly like a radio station. And you are the antenna, you are the radio, and you are the speakers. So when you, <laughs> you're, like a radio antenna is always sensing all of the radio frequencies, right? It, it can't help it. It's it's an antenna. It senses frequencies. That's what it does. Um, the only thing that needs to happen is someone needs to come on and turn on the switch, turn the switch on, turn the radio on. When you lose yourself in the moment, when you allow, when you, when you realize, okay, I am always and forever constantly tuned in to my source frequency. All I need to do is turn myself on. I just need to turn myself on. And then the source frequency floods through you. <laughs> and then your body puts it out there into the human sensory experience through the way you move, through the way you talk. Through the emotions that you emit, the emotions that you emit, right? Just, just, just straight out. <laughs> that is how you 
ground your source frequency. You, you take your source frequency and you in, like interpret it, but you don't even need to know how to interpret it. You're an interpreter. You don't even know you're an interpreter. You just need to lose yourself in the moment, channel yourself, channel your own source, and then just exist, right? And literally the only thing you need to do is just entirely get out of your own way. Just get out of your own way. Just drop out of all of your worries, drop out of all of your thoughts, drop out of your own mind and just channel your source frequency and turn the radio on, turn yourself on, turn yourself on, and then be the moment, be the moment, be whatever frequency you are channeling in that moment. And then you will find that you are home, that here is home. You don't need to escape. You don't need to return to your home planet. You don't need to return to source. You don't need to return to the central sun. You don't need to go anywhere because you are grounding your source frequency here. You are permanently, irrevocably connected to your own source frequency because you are your source frequency. You are source. You are your own source. <laughs> yeah. Wherever you are is home. Literally wherever you are. The fact that you are here, the fact that you exist, it is home. And you will start to see that reflected in your reality more and more and more and more and more the more you lose yourself in the moment and ground your source frequencies into your human sensory reality because it's like okay <laughs> I just imagine you're standing in an empty room and you're like well this is kind of boring and then you tune into your source frequency and it will be in order, you don't even need to tune into it because you're always tuned into it because you're a radio antenna and you're always sensing it. All you need to do is turn on, turn yourself on, pick the right radio channel. Just be like, I am tuning into myself. I am myself. I am my source frequency. <laughs> I am the moment. I'm losing myself in my moment right now, right here, right now. On, 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 on. I am turned on. And then <laughs> it's like, <laughs> then the the white walls of the room just start being painted in the perfect color that you imagined and your perfect furniture starts filling in and then a cat walks in and you're like oh my god that's the perfect cat that I've been dreaming of and then um, the human <laughs> that you want right if, if it's your if it's growing a family if it's finding your perfect lover right they they walk in because because you have translated your source frequency into your human sensory reality and once you emit that out in the human sensory world and you emit it through your body right you emit it through your body this is so getting so grounded into your body emitting it through your body through the way you move through the way you think through the way you feel through the way you exist through the way you lose yourself in the moment through the way you channel the moment in every moment of your existence and then the, the world has to reflect that back to you it like has to that's how it works that's how this universe works that's how we did that's how it's done that's how it's done um <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what else to say to that. <laughs> I guess I'll draw one tarot card. Six of crystals. So, oh, what's at the bottom of the deck? Ace of wands. Guys, there is your magic wand. Your magic wand. You are holding the magic wand. You are the magic wand, see? <laughs> this is the antenna. This is the antenna I kept seeing, right? He, that light there, that's your source. That's your source. See how your antenna is literally, literally connected to your source and you are down here. And when your entire being begins to vibrate with your source frequency, then everything comes into balance. And look, at, here you are again. This person standing here up on this rock with the light coming down. That is your source frequency coming down. You're embodying it into your physical reality. And the Six of Crystals is this card of balance, this card of bringing everything into balance, this card of reciprocity, this card of reciprocity with the world, this card of everything working out for you, everything working out for you so much, so much, so much, so much, being amazed by how everything just kind of falls into place for you. <laughs> and it's like reciprocity with the universe, receiving everything that that you allow yourself to receive, you will receive exactly as much as you can open up to. You can receive exactly as much as you can allow yourself to receive. Remember that your life will be as easy as you allow it to be. Your life can be fantastically, phenomenally easy. It is easy to have an amazing, joyful, fantastic, enriched, abundant, loving life. You just need to allow yourself to have it to drop out of resistance. Just allow it, allow it to flow. And also with this is 
the higher you let yourself vibe, the, the more you allow yourself to receive, the more you, your light, your energy, your abundance, all your love flows out into the world around you. So all of this adds up to not just you creating your fantastic ideal reality, but also you allowing others to create their more ideal fantastic reality. It, it's just, this is like a light, you become a light keeper you allow your light to flood out to be the guiding light for others and everything comes into balance. <sighs> I think I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Okay, group number two, you guys have the Amethyst Citrine and the Mystery Stone. This crystal is, I have so much to say about this before I even do anything else, okay. Um, first of all, it's Amethyst, which as you probably know, right, relates to the crown chakra, opening, cleansing, clearing, activating, all of that. But it's also the citrine, which is kind of more of a throat chakra crystal, all about communication. And also this, the fact that it is double pointed here, there's a word for that. I don't know my crystal terminology, but it's got, you know, it ends in two points. To me, this is all about being receiver and transmitter. You are a receiver and a transmitter. Your crown chakra is receiver and transmitter. Your throat chakra is receiver and transmitter. To actually, interesting message that I haven't quite received before, that you don't just express through your throat, but you also receive through your throat. I don't know what to make of that. I will just let that sit for now. You guys have also excited my dog with your, with your fantastic energy. He is, can you hear him? <laughs> okay, the dog is in bed. <laughs> but he wants to party. He wants to party, guys, because he knows how high frequency you guys are. <laughs> He's still growling. I'm going to have to stop talking about him because he knows. And this stone, I don't know what it is, but it makes me think of dragons. And it feels like mossy. It feels earthy. I'm just, I'm just getting these vibes of like, Dragons in the earth and then dragons in the clouds. Almost like, like a yin and yang image of the earth dragons, like literally in the earth, like under the, under the earth's crust, swimming around <laughs> in the caverns underneath the earth, in the water underneath the earth even moving through the rocks because you know they're dragons and then dragons up in the air up in the sky and it's like they're doing this beautiful dance of like through the ages they move through the earth and then up in the air they move through the sky and they cycle and cycle cycling 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 yin and yang the ouroboros ouroboros i never know how to pronounce that perfectly interconnected and yet separated by space separated by space but n but not by frequency separated by space but not frequency separation of space is an illusion your human your human vessel allows you to experience the illusion of physical separation but the only thing the only type of separation that is real is vibrational separation. If you are vibrating, however you are vibrating, you are connected to everything that is also vibrating with you. Sorry, I got distracted by my dog again. I was saying, <sighs> you guys are learning about like vibrational navigation, right? And if you're vibrating at a certain frequency, then you are <laughs> like in the same box or in the same boat or on the same road or just in the same choir, whatever you're, you're connected. You, you are with, you are with, 
You are literally with everything else in all of the cosmos that is vibrating at that frequency. So if you vibrate with peace or love or joy, then you are literally with everything else that exists. You are with it <laughs> because you, you are connected through vibration. There, there is there is nothing else. It is not about what you see around you. It is it is not about it is not about separation through space. It is not about separation through time. There is only what you are connected to vibrationally. Seven of Swords. Let's get more. Two of Wands. Ten of Swords. Well, I meant to pick up the bottom of the deck, but I ended up picking up, I ended up cutting the deck by, deck by accident. So, Queen of Swords, Four of Wands at the bottom. There is this sense of loss here that I'm very surprised, very surprised. Okay, the, these, I didn't, I was just shuffling and these were face up in the deck. Uh, now I understand what this is about. Okay, you guys have passed one of the most difficult initiations that I think anybody can go through. And I, I was surprised that this, um, that these vibes came up in your reading because this is, this is for like the people flying high, right? This is for the people flying high. But it, it's like, how did you get to be so high flying? How have you gotten to where you are now? You have learned what it means to walk in solitude. You have learned what it means to walk alone. In order for you to have learned that, that means that in this life's journey, you have lost something, someone. <sighs> but you have already come into the understanding that nothing is ever lost. Nothing is ever lost. You know, um, I'll just, I might as well just share what this means for me personally, like where I'm coming from with this. Um, so in this last year, I lost my cat left his body and I actually used this particular deck because it's a cat deck to um like receive messages about that situation when because you know it, he wasn't just a cat to me right <laughs> it was so much it was so much more I mean any animal lovers you guys know what I mean right um and then later that year later last year um an old friend of mine I haven't seen him I haven't seen or talked to him in years right but we were really close in high school and he left his body <laughs> and um and yet here I am feeling better than ever, right? Feeling better than ever, having survived those losses and understanding that they're not gone. They're not gone. They're even more with me now than they ever were, right? Than they ever were. And this is... I almost want to say mediumship, but I don't expect mediumship like abilities to, you know, like holding a seance and communicating with um, passed on spirits. Uh, I mean, maybe some of you do that, um, but it, it doesn't need to be that obvious or that like deliberate. Um, it's just this feeling of whoever you've lost, they're like are surrounding you. They're surrounding you. They're woven in with you because you are, are vibrationally with them, right? You are vibrationally with them. Sometimes, um, you know, in meditation, I receive 
like a, a visit like from my cat, right? He comes and he visits me or once I was able to leave my body and go visit him, I, I didn't remember anything. But when I came back, I was so much more calm about that whole situation. And on the day that my friend died, I three times I saw I saw an owl flying like it was a transparent owl it wasn't a real owl but I saw it with my eyes wide open out in the daylight and, and it was this owl fl like flying flew over me three times and I keep receiving this this message this this owl flying over me and I know that it is a sign that I am like vi in vibrational attunement, vibrational attunement with those who have transitioned before me, right? Sometimes I'm sitting in my chair and I feel my cat walk across my lap. <laughs> it's not one of my, it's not my living cat, right? It is my cat who has gone on before me, but who's still, he's still here with me. And it, it, there's this feeling of like vibrational enmeshment, vibrational enmeshment. And I think this message is coming through. Now I'm starting to understand. I'm starting to understand. <laughs> Um, why do we have to lose those we love, right? Why have, why have we all been through this loss? It is because that is how we learn this greater, greater lesson. And you guys are graduating beyond this place of, you know, grieving, right? Of course you still grieve. It's, it's never to get rid of the, the grieving process. The grieving process, I think, always remains for as long as we are in our human bodies. But this feeling of the despair and the, the horror and the torment of people leaving their physical bodies, right? This is, it's like you're, you're starting to understand the higher level uh, metaphor to this, the higher level lesson to this. It's like, what is this mirroring for you, right? What is this mirroring for you? And it, enmeshment is the only word I've got for this. Enmeshment, right? You have learned from experience that when someone leaves, when someone is gone, they're not really gone because their energy is with you and because you are you can be vibrationally attuned to them therefore it's the same thing with any other kind of vibration at any other thing that you live you know some of you maybe you watched the second reading because maybe you've been fluctuating between these two like places right the middle and the higher vibration the second reading was was about being an antenna being an antenna for your own source frequency and tuning in and then turning on the radio and then playing what you picked up with your antenna. For you guys, this is way beyond being an antenna because there is like a little bit of a linearity thing going on with an antenna. Like an antenna is just one slice of the pie. For you guys, this is, um, it's like you're, you're not an antenna. You're, you're graduating beyond being an antenna. Like you're already are an antenna. You've learned the lessons of being an antenna. And now you are, I keep seeing like a, like a silver ball. Like a, you're, you're like a, a whole thing. You're like the whole pie. You're the whole ball. Um, It's like your entire consciousness is enmeshed with the entire quantum, with the entire quantum field. I don't even know what to call it. Um, your entire being, your entire soul, your entire consciousness is able to move up into these much, much deeper, deeper, deeper soul lessons because you're doing it with your whole soul. You're doing it with your whole soul and things can come through instantly, instantly, instantly. There's no more, I mean, you can still do these things, but you don't need to anymore. You don't need to like tune in and turn on yeah, <laughs> to, to receive a message. It's that your entire being is enmeshed with your oversoul with your higher self with your primordial consciousness with source like i don't care what you call it with it's like with the entire quantum um your your entire bubble of consciousness is <sighs> okay the the image i'm getting is like imagine you know black like the void imagine the void but the void isn't void the void is full of ether the void is full of the tiniest fractals of consciousness the void is intelligent infinity right it is infinite intelligence it is it is infinite intelligence right and you're like a bubble of consciousness and your bubble of consciousness can be can read anything from the quantum can read any part of intelligence infinity it's like it can be here and it can be vibrating here and this is completely non-linear so like there is no up down left or right diagonal there is no nothing there is just different 
different like zones of vibration, but there is no hierarchy, there is no direction, right? So it's like you can be vibrating here, receiving this information, receiving the, like tuning into this for your for your your life, whatever, and then you can instantaneously reappear somewhere else and you could even be in two places at once <laughs> okay uh, and then you can be over here and you can be over here and you can be over here you can be over here and now what i'm seeing is all of those different dots are actually being connected so it's like you're creating a superstructure of consciousness i need to get a piece of paper oh i actually got one right here this is perfect okay imagine this black piece of paper is the void or the quantum or the astral or intelligent infinity infinity <laughs> and you notice how I'm having trouble like picking a singular word? That's because that's the level of consciousness you guys are tuning into where nothing is linear anymore. Like there is no linearity to the point where you might have trouble functioning in your daily life because things that are linear won't make sense to you. Trouble like communicating with words because you pick a word and then you want to also list like all the synonyms, right? Because each synonym has a slightly different shade of meaning for the word. You know, I say void and then I'm immediately going... <laughs> void, <laughs> intelligent infinity, quantum, astral. It's like boom, 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 because everything exists in a circle. Everything, it, even a circle is just a 2D representation of a sphere, right? Of a bubble. And then what is like a 4D, 5D, 6D, 12D, 24D, like 144D, like what, it, the bubble just gets more and more multidimensional. So, but all we got to work with here is a 2D representation. So here's the void. There is your bubble of consciousness. There is also your bubble of consciousness. There is also your bubble of consciousness. There is also your bubble of consciousness. So on and so forth. And it's entirely up to you. You can like, you can read, you can read intelligent infinity by lighting up one of these bubbles of consciousness. And it's like, you're just reading what is there. You, you, you realize that you're just an awareness. You realize that you're just an awareness and you can just read whatever is there. You can read literally anything from intelligent infinity, from the void, from the astral. You just read it, right? You just read it. You just, with your awareness, you just read it. You just receive it. Or you can go over here, or you can go over here, or you can go over here. <laughs> and what you, you can, do this sequentially and just go from one and then turn it off and then go to the next one or you can light them all up and what i see you ultimately doing is becoming like remembering how to be multi-dimensional on a new level because okay now you've got all these separate things going on and this might reflect in your physical life with having many different things going on like working like having like three jobs and then two side projects and like you have all these different things going on um and you might think like did I bite off more than I can chew? Do I have too many things going on? Is this weird? Is it weird to have so many different lives? Maybe you even feel like you have multi, like many different personalities expressing themselves or many different like jobs or tasks or just sides of yourself. It's like there, you, you are so multidimensional and your multidimensionality is expressing itself in your physical human life. Yeah, now I'm repeating myself, right? Because I already said you could have different jobs. You could have different um, friend groups. You could have different personalities expressing themselves you could have different circles of interests all of that you get what i mean right <laughs> you're becoming multidimensional in the human physical form and that might confuse you <laughs> that might be strange but here's the thing um like he you know there's like this whole thing of multitasking right and there is something to that multitasking you can get worse at things when you're multitasking because you're splitting your attention but have you ever noticed something okay here, here um have you ever noticed when you're multitasking, like just I'll use myself as, as an example. Um, I have trouble if I'm like reading and writing because I read and write at work. I read and write constantly all day at work. So I'm reading and writing. Um, I can read and write. And if somebody messages me, I can also message them back. I can like do my job reading and writing, reading and writing, and I can stay in the zone. And technically, I guess I'm multitasking if I'm also like messaging somebody, also texting somebody. But since it's all like on my computer screen, it's, since it's all just reading and writing, I can also be like over there, like reading a book or like reading Wikipedia. I can be doing like three or four different things at once. If it's all just reading and writing and if it's all on my computer, then I can multitask really, really well. And like, I can prove that I can do it really, really well because, um, you know, my job keeps metrics. And so I can prove that, hey, I was still doing really well at my job while multitasking, right? Um, but yet, if somebody came, like walked up to me and started talking to me and expected me to hold a conversation while I'm talking to them, I can't do it because I can't like switch my attention between reading and writing and then to verbal communication. And I certainly can't do something like cooking while, while working. It's like, I can't 
but it's like as long as everything is like a frequency match, right? Reading and writing, that's all like the same type of frequency, so I can multitask that way, but I can't split my frequency. I can't split my frequency be between the sound, between two entirely different bandwidths, right? So all of these things that you're doing, all of these things that you are, these are all these dots all represent things that you are. You can be all of them because they are actually all the same frequency. And here's the thing, they might seem completely different. It's like over here you might be a janitor, over here you might be a professor, and then over here you might be a stripper. <laughs> and you might think all of the, these three things, I, I do these three jobs and they're all completely different, but it's like maybe somehow for you, for the way you do them, the way you tune into them, they're all of the same frequency, right? They're all of the same frequency. It, 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 and you might not be able to see how the same frequency it might not make any sense right janitor professor and stripper those might seem like they all have nothing in common but to your experience if you're doing them from the same frequency then you're doing them from the same frequency and therefore you can do all of them um same thing if you have like five entirely separate friend groups and <laughs> it, it might seem and maybe you want to like invite them all over, right? Maybe you just have five different people who've never met each other and you feel like, oh, they'll never get along. They're all so different. They're all from completely different walks of life, completely different backgrounds, completely different education levels. They'll never get along. But if they're all, if, if, <laughs> if they are all a friend of yours and you know that they are all, and you're a friend of with all, you're friends with all of them because they match your frequency, right? Well, then when they all get together, they're going to be able to resonate with each other simply because they're all on the same frequency. The fact that they express their frequency through different walks of life is completely irrelevant. It is, you're tuning into the frequency matching, frequency matching. Everything is just about the frequency. It doesn't matter about what it looks like in physical form. It's only about the frequency. So that's the physical manifestation of it, but also like look back out to the void, right? We're, now, we're back out here in the void and you have all of these silver blobs of consciousness. And this is what I think you're going to be learning to do this year. So right now you're kind of like this. You got all these dots, but they're not connected. They're not connected. Not yet. Maybe some of them are connected. Maybe you've got like that. Maybe you've got two of these dots connected. But this year you're, oh, I'm getting like massive shivers in my brain from, from this. This year you're connecting all of your quantum dots. You're connecting all of your disparate vibrational points of consciousness. You're going to be going like this all year. It's like your whole brain is exploding and it's, but it's not just your brain. I mean, it is your brain on the human level, but it is also like consciousness synapses. It is like, this is like your consciousness doing this. Everything is connecting. And I mean, then you can even start like going like this, right? Everything starts connecting. <laughs> everything, everything starts connecting and it all works because it is all about the vibrational connection of all of the disparate huge variety of things that you're doing and as you can see this reading has jumped around like massively um and that's actually part of this so it, um because the the you can see the meta level here i know you guys can otherwise you wouldn't be resonating with this reading right the, the meta level of all of this is things happening to you that at first don't make any fucking sense you go how like, what is this about? I don't understand. How could this be happening? Like, what, 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 what? Just that feeling of like, why would my higher self bring this situation to me? This doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever in any way, shape or form. Um, and Because on the human level, it might take a minute for all the points to, to connect up and things might get extra weird. It might get extra weird because you're, you're starting to make this web, right? Imagine if... All of these dots, if they're manifesting in your physical reality, they might not make any sense, right? Like stripper, professor, and janitor, they don't make any sense. Um, so it's going to take time for you to see the connection. In the human exp experience, it takes linear time to see the connection. Maybe, uh, you know, by the end of the year, you start to see why you're working as a janitor, as a professor, and as a stripper. You'll start to see how they're all connected, right? You'll start to see how they're all the same, they're, the, they're all different expressions of the same vibration, different expressions of the same vibration. Um, so when weird shit happens in your life and you're going, I can't even like, what, what? <laughs> and th that could be like big things happening to you, right? Or it could be little things like, Okay, an example. Uh, two days ago, my stepson uh, dumped a m dumped a milkshake in the car, and I, <laughs> you know, spilling milk all over the uh, car upholstery. That was like okay. That <laughs> and then the next day, he shatters a glass bottle <laughs> all over the kitchen, and then it took like an hour to clean up all the broken glass. And then today, I drop a glass. It didn't break though, but I, but I, <laughs> and 
I can't even begin to tell you. It's like in the last two weeks of my life, there's been all of these like random little events like that. So sure, this could be big stuff for you, but I think for most of you, this is gonna be more little things going haywire. It's gonna feel like your reality is just completely fucking haywire. Like what is going on? How did I just break six glasses in two days? It just like random things like going weird or you know your packages it, it's almost like a mercury retrograde on steroids but happening outside of mercury retrograde right things getting weird things getting weird um or just doing doing things like maybe you're inspired to do things that you thought you would never do or <laughs> everything getting weird right everything getting weird because it's like this all of these pockets of consciousness are erupting out into your physical reality and it's going to take a higher bird's eye view to understand the perspective you're going to need to think like a hawk <laughs> like you need like you need to see like a hawk or you will never be able to connect all the dots but here's the thing don't put any pressure on yourself to connect the dots because you don't actually need to connect the dots you don't need to understand why this is all happening you just need to live it Live it and love it and just see where it's all going, right? Live it and love it and see where it's all going. And I think I was trying to express like the meta reading of this reading. So I bet you guys already do this, right? When you're watching a reading, of course, I'm looking at the cards and I'm talking and I'm giving you my interpretation. Um, but you probably also know that me and basically any other reader, we're also reflecting your energy and the weird things we do in a reading. Like, for example, maybe I would, sometimes I see a card and I think it's a different card and I get confused. Or sometimes in a reading, um, cards are flying all over the place. Just whatever's happening in the reading is also reflecting your energy. So the fact that in this reading, it like jumped around and was very strange, but, and then somehow it all, ah, you can kind of feel how it's all kind of spiraling together and it's all connecting together. That is a literal reflection of your energy. So you might even start to see, um, like the people around you getting more confused. <laughs> uh, maybe the, the stuff you read, the content you consume, just things in your life like maybe you, if you if you use cards for yourself you might start pulling cards and go this doesn't make any sense this is weird that's because it's like this eruption of quantum vibration i don't like it's like i could just say i could just say weird words at this point i don't there are no words so i could just string together a bunch of bunch of metaphysical sounding words and try to get my point across but i think you guys just kind of get it and i will spare us all the weird metaphysical um making up terminology <laughs> thing because um words are going to be the challenge words are absolutely going to be the challenge because words are how we words are the way <laughs> language is the way that humans translate at the abstract to the linear it, it, language is like a a funnel for a, for a like a it's like a funnel. Language is like a funnel. You, you, you take an abstract idea, you push it through a funnel, but it doesn't really want to go because the hole is really small. And then you, you, know, you got to kind of pull it out and you pull it out in this weird, like big linear, like Play-Doh thing. Like imagine taking a ball of Play-Doh and then like having to squish it down into a funnel. And then when you pull it out, it's been linearized. It's long and skinny, um, but it, it was kind of strange to get there. So yeah, um, go easy on yourself if you're having trouble articulating yourself or even understanding what's happening because it, it's this entire like higher level consciousness network thing I don't have words for. <laughs> you will find yourself having like downloads where you just get these flashes of insight and understanding and, and it in a way that is entirely non-linear and you will really struggle to even explain it to yourself, to even write it down in your journal, to even explain it to anybody. Cause it's just going to be like, how do I put like this geometric message? A lot of your uh, downloads and stuff will be like geometric. And how do you describe that in words? <sighs> Transformation. You are becoming the new, the latest, next best version of yourself. You have already transformed in the past. You have already become in the past. You have already done this. For you guys, like like levels of your spiritual awakening is kind of getting like to be old hat. It's like you're getting used to it. It's like you're getting used to it. You're like, okay, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Um, this something, this is something brand new coming through. This is you. I'm really reminded of the, I did a reading a couple days ago or something um, for, 
moon signs because I feel that our lunar energy represented by our moon signs are coming forward and we're learning to like hybridize ourselves literally within ourselves taking our solar energy and our lunar energy and melding ourselves together to become a new third thing to become a hybrid to become a hybrid of our lunar like a lunar and solar energy and that feels like this is the kind of transformation that you guys are going in so um you could check out that video or you could just think about take your sun sign and then take your moon sign and then feel into it. If you put those together, smushed them up and made a hybrid, what would that look like? There's so many different combinations of sun and moon sign, right? But So what would yours personally look like? Because that's what you're becoming. That's what you're becoming. The combination of your sun and moon sign. And if you have your sun and moon in the same sign, then there is something extra special going on with you because you kind of already have this inner balance and there, there's going to be like balancing between you and your environment, right? This, this, thing that you're hybridizing with comes in from the outside in your case, but for everybody else, you're hybridizing within yourself and transforming into something you've never seen, something you maybe, but it's like you always knew deep, deep, deep down in your deepest fantasies. Your deepest, in some cases, most forbidden fantasies, the fantasies that you never dreamed you could possibly unleash upon the world. Your deepest, deepest fantasies about how you wanted to be, how you always knew that you should be. Like, should not, not as in like you should, but as in that's who you were born to be, right? That is your soul. That is your soul. Like born, like you're transforming into like your soul self, like your whole self, your whole soul self transforming into it. And your life will transform with you. Your life will absolutely transform with you because it must, it must reflect back to you. That's how this universe works. It will reflect back to you. So your consciousness is bringing on this expanded network of consciousness and it's going to be a total crazy ride, but it's going to be fantastic and going to be amazing to see how this consciousness network that you have within yourself will manifest in your physical body because you will find yourself weaving together all of the disparate parts of yourself. And just to tie it back to the very beginning, um, I know I didn't really talk about any of these cards in detail, but I think um, these cards all came out just the way they did in order to lead me on this journey. I don't think I would have received this message any other way. And that, again, you can read the meta level of that, right? Um, I was surprised at the cards that came out, right? And <laughs> I didn't get it at first. It took me a minute and I had to kind of go through this like, hmm, like, what is this? What is this? What's going on? Why did these cards come out for this group of people? What, what is this? Right? And then it just kind of hit and then it just kind of hit. So, um, if any of you do read cards or do any type of psychic readings or anything, just like whatever it is that you do, right? You might find that it plays out like that where surprising things come out and you don't understand. And it's like, what? Weird, 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 weird. You might be challenged to go to like the meta level of whatever it is that you're reading, right? The meta level of it to when you notice yourself looking at some cards, for example, and being a little bit confused by the message, that in itself is the message, right? That in, in itself is the message. And then you just drop into your awareness and go, hmm, what is this bringing up inside of me, right? I was looking at this card and this immediately made me think of, you know, my dead cat and my dead friend right and this ten of swords and but also this two of two of wands going into the new world and then it reminded me of all the lessons I went through when they like left their bodies and but also how they came back to me and how I know that they're still with me and how I'm more vibrationally attached to them than ever before see how I had to go on that really convoluted weird journey from these cards to get to this to get to the actual like message that I the, the actual it's not even really a message right this is just an energy transmission I had to go on this very strange kind of convoluted journey in order to transmit the energy that I was supposed to transmit for this reading. So expect your journeys to go a little bit like that. When weird stuff happens, it's like, okay, just wait it out, see what unfolds and know that things will unfold in very, very strange, surprising ways. And I would say for you guys, if you want to like have a mantra, if you want to have an affirmation, something to remind yourself, it's just like things like everything works out for me. I expect the world to surprise me with how fantastically and magically everything unfolds. And even when things are completely confusing and absurd, everything always magically clicks into place exactly when I need it to, because everything is unfolding so, so perfectly for me. That's, 
that's the energy for you guys to tune into. And I'm going to leave you there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.